Hey guys, in this video I wanted to go over how you can plot a Manhattan plot and QQ plot using summary statistics in R. So for this video I'm going to assume that you already have some kind of text file that has your summary statistics. So I'm going to use this sample data set which I got online, which are the summary statistics from a GWAS on ADHD. And this was a publicly available data set from the Psychiatric Genomics Consortium. So I just downloaded this data set. So it's the summary statistics results from a GWAS. And all you need really are association results that have the chromosome, base pair position, and p-value for running this code. And in order to plot a Manhattan plot and QQ plot in R, I'm going to use a package called FastMan. And I'm also going to load in a package called data.table just to read in the summary statistics file. So let's go ahead and go over how you could plot the Manhattan plot and QQ plot in R. The first couple line of codes just read in the data set. So I set the working directory to the folder that has my ADHD.txt file. And then I load in that file using this line of code. I already ran that line of code. So I have the data frame loaded in already here. And I called the summary statistics data data. So my data variable has results for about 809,000 SNP association tests. So I just have loaded in the data here. Then to plot a Manhattan plot, you just run one line of code called fast man, which stands for fast Manhattan plot. I'm going to pass in the variable that has my data frame. And this is the only required variable. If you just pass in data, the data variable, it will try to find the correct columns of your data frame, but sometimes that does not work. So I just like to manually put in the optional parameters as well. So you're going to need to put in what the header name is for the chromosome column, the position, which is the base pair column, and also the p-value column. So if I check my data frame, chromosome is called CHR in capital as the Header. The base pair position is called BP, and then the p-value is labeled P. So these are the values that I passed in here. And then those are the only values you have to pass in, and you're ready to run this line of code. This line of code will then plot a Manhattan plot in the plots tab if you're running the R code in R Studio, and it does take a minute to run. So it will take a minute to run, then it will look like it's ready, and then it'll take about an extra minute to actually plot in the plot window. So I'm just going to wait for that result. Okay, so that took about a minute or two to run, and then the Manhattan plot was plotted here. So we see by default it will put the title as Manhattan plot, and it will also by default plot the suggestive significance line, which is here in dashed in blue, and the genome-wide significant p-value line in red. So there's options in the FastMan function to either keep or remove these lines, but usually what you will do is you will check for any SNPs that are above this significant line, and you will check the locus for each of these values. So one option is you can just be done with this plot and you can keep this scheme of alternating gray and black for the chromosomes. But another thing you might want to do is you can optionally change the colors of the Manhattan plot. So you can do that just by adding an additional optional parameter which is called color. So for color, you just pass in the colors that you want. And you can either do this by passing in a hex code directly, or R has some built-in color names that you can pass in as well. So for example, I got one hex code color from just some random website, so I want to use this red color. And then I also looked at some colors that are default in R, and I picked a couple colors from these options here. And you can pass in as many colors as you want, so the number that you pass in, it will just alternate. So I'm going to pass in three different colors, and so it will alternate the three different colors in the plot. So I'm just going to run this next line of code to show you the new Manhattan plot with colors. And again, that will take a minute or two to run. Okay, and then after that's finished running, we see the result here. So these are the three colors that I wanted to customize the plot with. And then after running a Manhattan plot, another major plot that you always want to have when you're plotting your summary statistics results is a QQ plot. I usually like to plot those on a square grid or with a square axis. So to do that, I'm first going to run this line of code, which will make sure that the next plot is square. And then to plot a QQ plot, 
but you can again use the fastman package and the function for that is fastqq. Then for this function, all you have to do is pass in your data variable and that will again take a minute to run. And when that's done, you should see the result plotted here. So I have the QQ plot plotted on a square grid and we basically would expect to see that the black dots should mostly follow this red line up to the larger p-values and that's when they should start diverting from the red line and we also see the genomic inflation factor value here so this factor value should be close to one and if you have a problem with this or if you have inflation that might be a sign of having population structure problem in your GWAS and that's everything I wanted to go over in this video and thank you guys for watching.